the second version of naive base is not going to ignore the term frequencies if you recall we were only looking at the presence or absence of words and documents in the version of naive base that we saw right which was the multivariate uh, bernoulli random uh, sorry multivariate bernoulli version of naive base now we are also going to keep track of the term frequencies how many times a particular word appears in a document but let me explain it to you in a slightly different way we'll i'll just come back to that point the way to think about uh, this is imagine building a language model for each class so what is a language model a language model for each class will be an estimate of the frequency or the proportion of words so in the previous version of naive base also we did build a language model so it was just a language model where we are looking at the proportion of documents which have a particular word <clears throat> right now we are going to keep track of the the so in the previous model we were computing something analogous to the document frequency of a particular word right we are computing how many times a particular word appears in documents of that class where each occurrence of this word in a document just counts once even if it appears multiple times in a documents we just had a one or a zero for it in this model we are we are going to look at the collection frequency we are going to look at a uh, that an at an estimate which corresponds approximately to the collection frequency of w and again this collection by collection i mean the documents all the documents that are associated with that particular class so if, if so let's say we are looking at a class c okay so for class c we are going to keep track of Okay, look at every term look at every word w in all the you know uh, in the training data for c and compute the probability of a random word being w of a random word in the training data in the uh, in a document of class c being w so imagine taking all the training data just concatenating all the documents belonging to the class c in the training data so we are just looking at all the words that appear in those documents now what is the pro how many times did we see the word w in total okay we are looking at something analogous to the collection frequency so if w appeared three times in the first document four times in the second document and once in the third document the total number of times we saw w was 3 plus 4 plus 1 so that will be the numerator and the denominator will be the total number of words that we saw <clears throat> so that would be the number of words in the first document plus the number of words in the second document plus the number of words in the third document and so on so in effect we are computing the probability that w uh, that uh, so the, the probability of seeing w in class c is just the percentage of times that we saw w among all the words in class c right so the probabilities could look something like this so you have a, a bunch of words here in the vocabulary and for each word you have the fraction of times the word appears in documents of that class counting the number uh, you know counting multiple occurrences also this time okay so these are the probabilities and obviously uh, you know if you were to compute this for every single word and add up all these probabilities it would have to be 
Is that clear? So we we build a model for each class. So we build a model for class one and we build another model for class two. So we estimate these probabilities for class one and for class two. Now let's consider a particular document. Let's say it has these words. So this is the document. The class pleaseth yon maiden. Now what is the probability that this document was generated from class C1? The probability that it was generated from class C1 is the probability that the first word was a the. Okay, and what is the probability that the first word was a the? Well, we've estimated it before. Okay, we, that's just going to be the percentage of times that the word the appears in documents of class C. So we'll take that probability. What is the probability that uh, we'll see a word that the second word will be class. Well, that's just the probability that a random word picked from, you know, any training document for class C1 will be uh, the word class. So that would be 0 0.01. So we, we take all these probabilities that we've computed while building this model and we multiply them again. So we are making the same naive assumption here that the occurrences of different words is in, are, are independent of one another. So the probability of seeing this particular document generated from class C1 will be the product of the probabilities of generating the word the, then generating the word class, then generating the word please it, then generating the word yawn, then generating the word maiden from class C1, from the model for class C1. And likewise, we can compute the same probability for class C2. And then we compare what is the probability that this document, let's, let me call this D, what is the probability that this document, th th that given this document, it came from class C1, what is the probability that it came from class C2? So we'll compare these two again. Assuming that there are only two classes, we'll compute which of them is larger, and that's the class to which D belongs. So this kind of a model is called a unigram language model because what we are computing here is the probabilities of seeing the word W for all W. Right? So for, the, for any particular class when we are building this language model, we are just computing the probability that the next word we are going, that, that, that a given word, that some word that we are seeing is W. Now there could be a more sophisticated model where we don't just compute these probabilities. We actually compute the probabilities of seeing the word W after some other, uh, you, you know, after the word the, let's say, or after the word dinner and so on. So that would be a biogram language model. Okay, so a biogram language model will say that the probability of uh, so, uh, so let's focus on class C1 here. The biogram language model will say that the probability that this document will be generated from class C1 is the probability of the from that class times the probability of the word class appearing after the word the. after the word the in the class C1 multiplied by the probability of the word pleaseth appearing after the word class. In document uh, in class C1 and so on. So you'll have to compute not just these overall probabilities that we are computing in the uni unigram language model, but also we'll have to keep track of the previous. So whenever we saw the word the what was the previous word? Okay, so there would be different possibilities for the previous word. So for all those possibilities, we have, we'll have a, uh, uh, we'll be splitting apart all these cases into finer cases. Some of them may have the following 
the word dinner some of them may have the following the word uh, you know buy and so on so that would be a bigram language model but what we are going to focus on is purely a unigram language model just to keep things simple i just wanted to tell you about these more complicated models just so that you know that uh, you, you know how you know how to extend them into these more complicated models but let's just focus on the simple unigram model <clears throat> 